Hello and welcome back to another episode of our freshly cybernetically enhanced uh, runner Sparklight. My name is Saiken and we are playing Shadowrun Hong Kong on hard difficulty. Uh, today we're going to look at yet another run. Uh, this is Sparklight in his current glory. Uh, we gave him wild reflexes, uh, better eyesight with a smart gun and a uh, cyber arm to uh, throw back grenades that are being lobbed at us, which is happening way more often than you might imagine. So, which of the runs do we want to take today? Um, we could go into the Bay Hotel. I think that's interesting. Mm. Yeah, let's just start with that. I don't remember the total uh, the uh, total run in its details but i was quite favorable with the team that we had the last time although it sucks having duncan not on board gaichu has really uh, dealt a lot of damage with his katana and the way that we skilled him uh, worked uh, super well and it feels that mm, isobel with uh, her decking skills and uh, gobbit with her support abilities are really helping a lot. So let's get this party started. I do remember this run. It is an excellent one. It's the one. Remember, uh, it's the one of uh, from the uh, from the producer, the film producer, who wanted to steal the lead act from his uh, competitor. So we're going to go through exactly that. Okay, we got our drones. Good enough for now. Definitely need to save some money for upgraded uh, drones. And we also need to upgrade intelligence at some point. But for now, we're uh, specking more heavily into cyberware. So, yeah, we don't have any backup gear. And no Dirk Wagon contract. I hope that that's not going to backfire. We're playing very greedy with not investing the 250 uh, Nguyen into at least the basic contract. Good. Our idea here is to essentially crash the party of this incredibly successful uh, filmmaker. And in order to do that, I want to... Um, let Isobel hack in and put us on the guest list. There we go. Right. Only a few minutes in and we're already in the matrix. Oh, that was unnecessary. Could have played that way better, specifically since the system does not have a high threshold for any exceptions. Are you shitting me? Did I just... Yeah, I literally... So, well, I mean, that was poorly played. <laughs> and now I have to face the consequences. We talked about black eyes. Here it is. It's a really small... Uh, system and we basically uh, started the alarm our assassin oh that's only white eyes okay it's not even black eyes our assassin program will be good enough to deal with uh, some of them putting a shield on Isobel's persona and we should be fine luckily for us The fights in the Matrix, unless uh, you're in the later computers, aren't really that challenging. Isabel gives herself a bit more accuracy. The only positive part about systems 
that uh, are overloaded is you're going to have a lot of fights. You're essentially like fighting your uh, your way through the system. And you don't need to be sneaky anymore. Yeah, they deal a lot of damage, all things considered. I mean, they just have power in numbers, right? Oh, I forgot. Yep, we still need to fight against the entry point. I almost forgot about that. Good. Good, we get the door code 1635. Downloaded the invitation. Downloaded uh, the hotel expansion. We can sell that a bit later in on the uh, black market. Yep, and that is it. Not much to see, it was a pretty small host. Good, and now we're discussing uh, with uh, the bouncer here. just lets us in and uh, we're uh, now getting some more information from all of the waiters and waitresses. Um. Yeah, we're not bribing him. The security guard basically guards the VIP area, but since we have now an invitation that we just gained by hacking the matrix, we can freely roam around and get some information. Most of uh, the stuff is mundane, it's kind of a superficial party here. Penelope Wong, I think she was the one that. Uh, mm, that's uh, the she's the lead actress that um, that uh, we were looking for, but the idea is she needs to voluntarily quit. This here is um, the guy himself, Mr. Ma, and there is a story around uh, him. Uh, Mr. Ma had a pretty uh, cr uh, crucial accident and uh, was. Um, in an, in the intensive care area of uh, the um, of the Dogwagon station. Dogwagon is kind of uh, the hospital. Um, but he got out just a few days after essentially being delivered uh, to that intensive care station. And we're about to find out what his rapid healing process was all about. Uh, I think that was 1635, yeah, okay. Good, first uh, noticeable feature is the entire, uh, the entire living room is incredibly cold.
Next noticeable feature is here is the security door here. And we need uh, the RFID chip for the door, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wait a second, there was still a refrigerator thing. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, it, that the code was downstairs. <clears throat> so yeah, we're talking with Penelope and say that we need the code and she just hands it over that easy peasy we have been invited so we must be friends that's when you know that you have fake friends by the way if uh, someone comes to your party and everyone uh, no one knows them, but everyone behaves as if they would know him or her. Good. So that's the extra suite. I'm being a bit careful here because uh, there are a couple of uh, things within that extra part, and I want to make sure that we're not accidentally running into them. Good. We're unlocking another door, and here is the reason why he was so healthy. It's a lot of fog in the room, and all of a sudden, a mysterious uh, woman begins to materialize. Kung Fen is her name, and she is quite obviously a vampire, but uh, since we do have a ghoul um, in our uh, proximity, it's really not that uh, difficult or that special and yeah basically she doesn't want to let us uh, leave um, it will turn out that she's actually uh, quite a uh, an afraid person she was she used to be an accountant and then accidentally got bit uh, with the virus So she's um, suggesting that we're going to the rooftop and having a proper fight right here. Which, of course, we are going to do. She doesn't need to ask twice for that. Let's take some cover. Oh, by the way, we could have summoned. Ah, we could have summoned a spirit down here. Damn it! That would have been really helpful. All right, uh, spark light. Well, apparently, spark can't select spark light. There we go. Isabel takes cover as well. And we're going to kill the first vampire. By the way, it was never like fully explained why um, there are additional vampires here. I've just not read it. Look at that flanked position. Oh my gosh, and we're missing it. Oh, that's really bad.
Yeah, how about... I think we are fine and we can just kill her with a shot. The pistol isn't particularly accurate on these long distances, so I might as well take the grenade launcher, yep. Because even if if we miss, there's a chance that we're still hitting something. Holy shit. Yep, that was great. We're going into control mode with the Doberman. Yeah, and so far it's not looking good for the enemy. That on the other hand was pretty damn good. Alright, let's get the civilian uh, down first. I think I want to summon down here. Can't do that anywhere else. So carefully moving over, and next turn we can then start summoning. <laughs> All right, the sniper drone is nasty. Like, when it crits, it crits really, really well. Good. Draw, driving closer. And we're summoning a spirit. That's good. Haste. Haste is not giving Gaichu a turn. That is strange. Good. Luckily, they expose themselves quite a bit here. Unfortunately, on the other hand, we need to heal Geiko in order to not die. That was helpful. Good, and that ends the ghost. He serviced us, uh, he provided us a pretty damn good service. Good. We're focusing her and she takes a lot of damage. Unfortunately, our 50-50 shots seem to regularly be missing.
There we go. We bested her. We humbled her. She now explains to us uh, that she had been an accountant and she just wants to survive. Her co-workers and her family no longer look for her. And we're deciding that we're going to help her. Good. She's not going to join us as a runner, but she will be available in the last mission, which will make the last mission easier. Plus we get quite a bit of karma for it. And I think that's pretty much it. We just need to talk to Penelope's and I think not even that I think we've we've just done everything. Yep, return to the doctor Because we do have All of the evidence of um, the interaction of uh, his this mr. Um, Han producer um, With the vampires so that's enough to frame him or blackmail him and Our run will be done Good. We need to talk to Mr. Johnson, get our payment, and then I'm wondering if we might want to invest some more money into cyberware. Probably. But we gotta get our stats straight before we do that. The other options are drones, but we do not yet get the really good drones. And the next drone I'd like to buy should be a Model S, so the best version of the drones. Good, we got ourselves six Karma points. Not sure if that's overall enough. And we can level up our team in a second. I think we'll get a Karma or two when we're now handing in the quest. So Dr. Shenyan, We'll use this information to blackmail. And if my memory serves me right, I needed to go to the terminal here, which never really made any sense to me for the payment, that is. Oh, that's an interesting dialogue as well. So we're now finding out that our father, Raymond, isn't really uh, Raymond, but, um, well, it's a fa it was a fake name. Um, that's, I guess, what I wanted to say. And that he instead is the son of uh, the female executive that is trying to frame us all along. So um, uh, his mother has essentially gotten him killed. Okay, open jobs directory. And here's the payment. Very nice, 1,100. Good, got four grand. That is enough. 
Damn it, and I even forgot to use my wild reflexes. We just bought them and I forgot to use them. That's bad. I'll do better in the next mission. So, we got Augment Summoning, Shrine Spirits. Are now present for an additional turn before dispelling themselves for a total of three rounds. That's great. And I think we're going to do exactly that. The last time I used Poison Fog and I was not impressed, to say the least. Isabel gets dual routine boost program, which increases the persona speed. That's basically haste. Or Isabel's mini weapon launcher is now packed with napalm charges, igniting targets. Uh, yes, please. That sounds way more cool. Good. He gets additional grenades, and I get it. Grenades are okay, but they are by no by no stretch of the imagination as good as in the actual role playing game. Yeah, either way of the uh, or either of the grenades will do. And finally, Gaichu here. The last time I went with the ghoul bite, and I regretted it a bit. It looked cool on paper, and it uh, worked well overall. Uh, it's an attack that deals damage and essentially um, gives you one strength and fills fills some of your hit points back up, which is okay. But at the same time. Whenever he scores a crit with his katana, the enemy starts to be dazed. And if he then could score a coup de grace, it would mean that he can essentially one-shot the enemy. And I, th I was underestimating how often, how often you, uh, you can use coup de grace. I think he can use it quite a bit because his crit is crazily high. Alright, and uh, we are back. Took a little break to finish up uh, this episode. Uh, the, the two things that are missing um, are the karma spend, which we're going to take right now. And then we still need to invest our new yen. So our idea was to go for body 5. Uh, almost inclined to actually do body 6, but this probably has to wait for now. So we're looking at 50 hit points, which is quite a lot, as well as uh, cyber, uh, cyber tech uh, level 5. But I feel if we're continuing to invest more into body, which might look good um, in the initial uh, picture, but if we invest more into body, we're probably not having enough karma left to fill out all of the other um, areas. So I think we gotta stop it at body 5. Um, go for quickness, dodge and range combat 5. Kind of take that as a breaking point as well and then uh, pour the rest into Intelligence to go for Intelligence 7. Okay, so the last thing that we wanted to do before ending the session is we're going to get some more Cyberware, guys. Good. We got uh, the cyber arm, the wild reflexes, and the eyes. And I think it's now time to either get two armor and one body with our alpha version of Aris, Aris uh, dermal plating. Or we're going to go for the cross dermal sheath implant, which kind of allows us to regenerate. I think we're going with the alpha version. 
that will boost um, our hit points quite a bit, costs almost as much as we can afford. And the next upgrades afterwards would be threefold. Number one, probably the Seda Krupp skill wires for quickness and uh, ranged combat. And then we're going to go with uh, the Universal Omnitech Cyberlex for extra hit points, quickness, and dodge as defensive stats. Um, and these require us uh, to already skill quickness and dodge. So I guess the next thing that we can do is uh, focusing on quickness and dodge, at least one more point, um, and, and spec into that. So we could get the legs next. All right. We have three ascents left overall. Probably need to get uh, almost a force to, uh, to get an, a bit higher cyber affinity to get more ascents. If we if we want to get a go full chrome with the new edition, we should have three armor instead of one. I don't know why it displays one over there, and that is strange. Um, this time, uh, with the dermal plating upgrade, it correctly displays it. So um, we have no stat increase um, on the actual karma screen that did not happen with the legs hmm very strange our cyber wear definitely shows we do have a passive of two armor and one body um, which means if you look at the character we're essentially at six um, body plus we can go up to three armor um, and have 60 hit points which makes us probably the most tanky character <coughs> in our party right now. Right, and that brings us to the end of today's uh, session. Thank you so much for watching. But, uh, I appreciate it, uh, the time, and next time we're going to do another run. So, see you around. Uh, leave a comment if you like, and see you in two days. Bye-bye.